Hello, everyone. So you might remember that where we left off was with an explosions lab, and in that explosions lab we had determined a couple of things. First off, in an explosion between two gliders, the final momenta of those two gliders was always equal in size and opposite in direction. Interesting. And very usable if you want to make a prediction. But in the post lab, we then took and, and looked at it in a little different way. And we compared the initial system momentum of the two gliders to the final system momentum of the two gliders. And we found that initially the system momentum was zero because neither cart was moving. And after the explosion, the system momentum was also zero because the momenta were always equal and opposite and that adds up to zero. So in other words, the fact that there was an explosion didn't seem to affect the system momentum. Interesting. And so we left off with the question, which is, is that something which is only specific to explosions? Or is that a more general rule that we can apply to more complex collisions? So that is what we are going to test in our next lab, the collisions lab, right? during which we are going to collide carts together, right? at least virtually, right, using a nice pivot. And we're going to uh, measure momentas before and after the collisions and compare them to one another. Right? So our question again we're trying to answer is, how does the momentum of the system before the collision compare to the momentum of the system after the collision? And so the purpose that you would see on the lab sheet, which of course you can find right on the schedule doc, it is to create graphical and mathematical representations of the relationship between the momentum of the system before the collision and the momentum of the system after the collision. Not during the collision, right, but before and after. And we're going to see how those compare to one another. Now, this is going to be a little more complex to do uh, than the explosions lab because there's a lot more to keep track of. Right? There's things that are that have momentum before and things that have momentum after. We got to keep track of directions. Right? So there's a lot of little things to keep track of and a lot of little calculations to make here. Okay. One other thing that you're going to see in the pivot is that it shows you two different kinds of collisions, which we're going to talk more about as we go throughout the unit. One type of collision is like when you have um, magnet ends, right? And you will see these uh, gliders and they have little magnets on the end, in which case they're not actually going to touch. They're basically going to bounce off one another using the magnets. And then the other one, which is kind of even more fun, they put putty on the end of the carts right? so that when they collide, they actually stick together and move as one thing. Right? So we have kind of magnet ends which bounce and putty ends which stick together. Now we are going to do this inside of a pivot and I will show you the pivot in a moment. It is called air track glider collisions because that's what we're doing. right? And you need to, of course, log into pivot and all that good stuff and open it up. Remember a couple of things here. Right? Remember that to calculate a momentum, we have to take the mass times the velocity. Unfortunately, pivot doesn't give us velocities directly, so we're going to have to calculate that constant velocity by doing displacement over time. Okay, Displacement and time here uh, to find the constant velocity. We're assuming that after the collision, the velocities of the gliders are constant because we can neglect frictional effects and angle because it's on an air track, right? riding on a little cushion of air. Now, you're going to see in the lab sheet that I'm not going to have you do the intermittent thing we did in the uh, explosions lab of having you write down the distance and the time you used and then calculate the velocities. I just want you to calculate the velocities straight off, right? So kind of have a calculator ready as you're using your pivot. Calculate your velocities and record those, and it may help keep things a little bit easier, although there are still calculations to do. So these are the basically the guiding equations we're going to use, okay? So we're going to start out by completing the data table by measuring the velocities of each glider before and after each collision. Right? So you could have as many as four things to keep track of. Right? Two velocities before the collision, two velocities after. And you'll see on the lab sheet that I have kept them very separate from one another, given them little names. Okay? I call them right glider and left glider because they're on the right and the left side of the screen. 
right? Initial and final. That's what the I and the F means. So before the collision, they are initial velocities and momenta. Uh, after, they're final. So let's take a look here at the pivot. We'll come back to this in a moment. So here we are in the pivot, okay? And this is where, this is actually the video that you'll see inside of it, okay? And I'm going to run through some steps. The steps I'm going to show you here on how to measure everything are going to be right on your lab sheet. So I'm going to start out by making it big down here, right? The expand button so that we can see it a little bit better, okay? Now down here, there are all sorts of different combinations. There are magnet collisions and there are putty collisions. You'll notice that not all of them are available, right? The magnet has some that are available, the ones that aren't aren't uh, dark. And then if we go clear and choose putty, the putty has different ones. Some of the same, but some different. Okay, We can choose any of these that we want. And the ones that I want you to use are on your lab sheet. All right? So you click magnet or putty, you click which one you want. Let's do this one and then you hit load. You have to hit load, otherwise it doesn't change the video. See how it's changing the video? So now we have putty ends, and we have a large mass catches a slower mass. So I want to start this. There it is. So now I can hit start. Here it comes. So he gives it a little push and lets it go. It travels along. Here comes the large mass, catches up, and sticks to it and off they go together. So if I take this back, I want to make sure it's after he lets go of it. Right? And then here we have some tools we can use. Right? There are two different rulers. The only difference between the two rulers is which side has the zero. Right? And then there's a stopwatch we can use. Remember the stopwatch can be Stopwatch can be reset so that any frame can be set as zero. So for example, if I want to measure the initial velocity of this, I might put the zero line right on the hash mark, or right on the X, right? So as close as I can. Then I will want to set the stopwatch to zero. Right? Then I can run this. Now, in this case, I can actually use all 10 centimeters, or at least pretty darn close to that, right about there, right? And I can say, okay, it's gone 10 centimeters in 1.8250 seconds. So if I want the initial velocity of this cart, I take displacement over time. Now, notice this cart went to the left, so it would be a negative right? Displacement, or negative velocity. So make sure you put the negative sign in. Very important for these because they are vectors, right? Now, in some of these labs, I might not be able to get the whole 10, and that's okay, right? You can do whatever distance you want. You want to use longer distances or better, but you may not get the whole 10 in there, right? You might get, you know, 5.4 or something like that, right? Just use whatever you can, right? Get whatever you can. Just want to make sure you're outside of the time when the collision, while well, the collision's taking place, okay? So I could divide uh, 10 centimeters by 1.825 seconds, put a negative on it. That would be my initial velocity for the left cart. Keep her running. Okay, now there comes the other cart, right? The large cart, the right-hand cart, if you will. And again, I want it after he's done touching it. So if I then take this, Put it here, right on the zero, re-zero the stopwatch, and away I go. Now you'll notice I can't use the whole thing, right? I can't use the whole 10 because it's going to run into it. So I want to find one where it's like right on a line, if I can. That one looks pretty good, I think. All right, so that would be one, two, three, four, five point two. Each one of these is two, so that would be about five point two centimeters in point two seconds. Five point two centimeters in point two seconds. Calculate it, right? Displacement over time, and put a negative on it because it's going to the left. 
So that's the initial velocity of the, um, the right cart, because it's on the right-hand side. Then, after they stick together, we can do this again and figure out the velocity of the carts after. Now, the putty is nice, and you'll notice the first four I have you do are putty, because afterwards, what's true of the velocity of both carts? They're the same, right? So you only got to measure one, calculate once, so you'll get the whole thing. So if I go back here again, put it on there, and then let's run it. See if we can get close to the whole 10 centimeters. Why not? Uh, let's see. That's probably pretty close. So if we go here and say that's 10 centimeters in 1.0417 seconds, Right? Divide, slap a negative on it. That would be the final velocity of both carts. So you have to write it in twice. With me there? This is going to be a challenge, right? You got to get directions, you've got to get initial, and you got to get final. Okay, now if we go into a magnet one, I'm just going to pick the one at the top. Huge mass into stationary tiny mass. <laughs> Here we go. There's the stationary tiny mass. If we run it, See how that's different, right? Because of the uh, magnets, they don't actually touch. Now, we have to be a little careful here. If we were going to analyze this one, I want to find my initial velocity before it gets so close to the small one that it starts to move it, because now they're interacting, and that's going to change the velocity. So I might want to capture this one, say, from here to here-ish. Right? Don't even let it get close. This one, of course, uh, the small one, the left one, is zero. And then afterwards, i got to let them kind of separate a little bit. So I might want to catch this one here, right, and then this one here. I could even do them at the same time if I wanted to, right, if I wanted to move the two uh, around. I could do both carts at the same time. And by the way, I just happened to chose this, but these would both be negative as well, wouldn't they? Because they're moving to the left. So most of the videos, stuff's moving to the right and they'll be positive. But I just happened to pick a couple of negatives here. Again, you would reset the zero, right? Reset this. And then you would run it as much as you want, right? Wherever you want to do here. That's about, oh, that's not bad. That's about 3.8 centimeters in this much time. And then this one you can do the same. You could use about 3.8, right, in that much time. Or you could let it run further if you wanted to. But either way, right, you got to keep track of all this stuff. It's going to take a while. That's why I cut it down to just 8, all right, which is a lot, but not as much as, you know, there's like 15 of them you can do. So I'm only giving you half the workload. Hey, but you got to measure everything carefully. Calculate your velocities. Put them in the data table. Positive and negative are very important. Okay? So let me get out of there, go back to the video, or to the PowerPoint, okay? So you're going to calculate um, the velocities, right? Put them into the table. The next table is going to have you calculate the momentum of each glider, which is really just taking the velocity and multiplying by the mass. Keep the positive or negative, though. That's not a problem, right? Then you're going to calculate the initial and final system momenta. How are you going to do that? Well, you're going to add the two initial momentums, all right, that would be the, the left cart initial and the right cart initial is the total initial. The left cart final and the right cart final is the final momentum. See what I mean? Okay, lots of calculations and lots of little places to make mistakes. Right? If you're having trouble, I, I think I'll have a key on the uh, schedule doc that you can check out, right? which I didn't do with the collisions lab, but check out the, uh, the key and that might help you out a bit. Okay? Again, don't forget that vector, velocity, sorry, and momentums are vectors. So you, if it's moving to the right, you have to record it as positive. If it's moving to the left, you have to record them as negative. Once you get all these things calculated, you're going to graph final system momentum versus initial system momentum, and then you're going to see what the slope is and if it's a curve and linear fit and all that good graphical analysis stuff and make a math model out of it. You're going to have a really interesting slope if everything works well. If your points don't look like they're fitting a particular shape, then that might mean you have a weird point or two. If you seem like you have a point that's way off somewhere, you probably calculated something weirdly. 
All right, so you have to go back and recheck it again. Spend some time doing this correctly. If all else fails, check the key.